Hello there, Mozillians. I quickly want to show you how to use the HTML5 slide deck that we have or that I put on GitHub for all of us and that I'm using for all my slides. So if you want to have the same presentations, the same look and feel, you can actually use that as well. It's using the shower uh, slide deck, which is actually by somebody in Opera. And I messed around with it quite a lot. So best is actually to get it from the, this repository and start playing with it. Now, the way it looks right now, I'm going to show you the quickly, quickly the things that you can do with it. You, so you have the slide titles, but you also have the list view. So if somebody goes to the page where you host these slides, this is what they will be seeing. They will be seeing the presentation title, the, an explanation how to use the slide deck, and actually the slide deck in a small preview. If you double click any of them, then you actually can see the full slide. Down there we have these notes. That's a feature that I added to the system as well that wasn't there before. So if you actually go into those and you write some notes here like, hello there, then you can actually, when you roll over the slides, you will see that this hello there becomes this one. When you show the slides in full screen later on, this becomes part of the development tools. So if you actually go from slide to slide, then these will, will show up in the notes. So in this case here you have Next Life Code Smooth and the titles of them and it shows you all the notes that you have there. But in most of the cases I don't use notes so it's just good for somebody who wants to see the presentation and read about each of these slides to do that rollover thing here. Now the slides themselves are out of the box like this. So they go from one to the other rather brutally. So what I added as well is a, a way to actually make that smoother. By, uh, you can do that by just adding a class of smooth to the HTML element. So you can say class equals fade, not smooth, but fade. And when you added this one, now the slides fade into each other much more smoothly than they did before. They don't have this like pop thing going on. So just adding the, f uh, adding the fade there will do that. You can also add a no numbers class. No numbers. And this one means that it won't have the slide numbers that you see down on the, on the bottom there. So there's no slide numbers next to the progress bar anymore. But if you want the slide numbers, just keep, just keep it there, but keep the, keep the fade as well. So that's about it for the main element. So what can you do with this slide deck? You can have full screen slides like this one where you have the images and the uh, automatically you have these backgrounds on the headings and on the notes down there. And the same with like the uh, credits. If you take pictures from uh, Flickr, for example, it's good to put a credit there. These are already up there. If you don't set the full slide, then it, the, the images will always be in the middle here by setting a class of middle to them. So let's take a look at the code of all of these things. So first of all, we have the introduction here. This is explaining how it is. And every single slide is a div with an ID. This ID needs to be unique, so you cannot use the same ID twice in the document because this is what the URL is going to become. And there you have all these things here, slide, cover, age. So for example, I've got an image in here where I just say apps. And cover age means that the image gets actually stretched according to the height of the screen. So if I were to take that cover out here and the age out here, and I just make it a slide, and I go back to that first cover slide, then it will actually look like this. And that's terrible because the image is not the right size. You can always change the image size just by adding a, a height to it. Uh, 400 pixels is actually the best because that fixes it directly into the document. So now you would have it in there. If you want to center this uh, image now in the page as well, all you have to do is add a class of center in there. And then it's actually centered, uh, class of middle, sorry about this middle and then it's actually in the middle of the page. If you want to have it to the left or the right, you might have guessed it, you can do a left or you can actually get it to do a right and then it will be accordingly on the page where you want it to be and the text will float around it. There's also other slides in there that actually do that. So you see that you have a credit slide here, you have the one with the uh, to the right and you have one to the left and you have one to the middle with a shadow. So next, that's the next thing that you can do with images. If you go to the image shadow slide here, so if I just look for shadow, you will find that this image, all it, all it has is a class called middle and shadow. So now it has this drop shadow down here. So if I were to take that shadow away, I would actually just get the image. Oh, that is interesting. Oh, that's the wrong slide, that's why. So um, 
if I go to the image with shadow and I get rid of that shadow here, uh, then I see that there's no drop shadow anymore. But a drop shadow is a beautiful thing to actually just show a little depth to your slides. So other than that, what do we have? We have an, a frame. So this is a little thing that I put around the image that actually shows it as a frame. So this one is done very simply as well. Instead of putting the class on the image, this time you do a figure around the image or a div or whatever you want to do. And you give it the class shadow frame and middle. And that one will give that little image frame that actually looks quite cute. The next thing I did for one presentation, which I thought was pretty cool, was animating that frame. And this is what that looks like. So you got a frame animation where the whole thing bounces a bit. And that one is done with just shadow frame, middle and swing class. And that swing class would put that thing in there. And that's basically all you need to have for images. Uh, if you want to put a URL under it, there's a class called demo URL on a P element. And that one would looks like looks like this. So this is great for screenshots. Just put a drop shadow on the screenshot, and then a URL there looks good. And when people try the slides out later on, they can actually see what's going on. Then we have lists. We have unordered lists. That's very simple. We have ordered lists in HTML. They're just ULs or OLs. We can have a long list. So if you put a class of long list on the list, then the font gets smaller and you have more space. So you are class long list. You have an inline list. If you do UL class inline, that actually shows the list with comma separation. So you don't have to type in these commas. They come automatically as well. And you have an animated list. And that one fades out now as well. So you see the other ones here are slight gray. And instead of going next when you go up and down or space or left and right on the, on the, um, on the keyboard, you now go through the inner navigation of that page. And that one is done with a um, UL class inner on the UL and an active on the first element. And that will now fade them in one by one. You've got quotes. They automatically get these uh, these quote marks and uh, I have a quote class here that actually shows the quote person or where you got the quote from on the right hand side of the page. So this one is like a block quote with a P inside. Make sure there's P's inside otherwise it's not valid HTML and do a P class or quote source for the source uh, where it actually came from. Uh, code is done very simply as well. You just do a pre and put a code element around each of the lines and that will automatically will give you a number of the line and will actually use a font that is monospace. So that one looks quite cute and actually does the trick. And of course you don't, don't have much space, but actually if you want to show a lot of code, I would switch to my code editor anyways. Then I thought a good idea would be to have a live code example thing. So this one here now I could show to the audience. And if I click on this one here, I can change live what's going on here. So I can change that to 500 pixels or I can do another line and actually do other things. So I can say like a transform rotate 30 degrees. And when I show that one then, then I can go back to the zero degrees and 30 degrees and 40 degrees. So I can show live in the page what a certain change in CSS would do. You can you see that the pair that the uh, code, the live code has this border around it and fades in and fades out when I do when I click into it and out of it. So that's pretty good as well. If you want to actually have a smooth one, there's another class for that as well. So I can say now with the 400 pixels here and will automatically do the changes with a bit of a transition in between rather than just directly there. So this is a very nice way to show a few lines of code and see people how much you can do in a browser just by changing a few settings in CSS. The way to do that in the slide deck is very simple. All you have to do is put an element in there that is your output element or several ones, no matter what you want to do in your CSS. And then you put a style element in that, in that slide and you put a content editable uh, attribute on that. That is all that is needed for the JavaScript to do the rest and the CSS to do the nice fading transformation. So all you do in there is actually make sure that your CSS actually is connected with your demo div and you're done. So this is how you use these slides. Uh, other things that you can do is just get rid of the progress bar if you don't want to use that one. So that one would actually mean that the progress now doesn't show, but you still got the page numbers there. But this has been done before as well. So these were the changes that you do. So in essence, the easiest you can do is take this slides demo.html, change it to your needs. And every time you need to copy something, just copy from these two divs to the closing two divs and create a new slide that way and make sure that you actually give it a new, a new ID and then you have a next slide deck in there. Have fun.